So uh, Nick, how's that open relationship of yours going? It's good. It's yeah. been a couple of months now. And you said you were not using any protection? No, no, no. She told me she was good. I'm good. And uh, I did the lemon test. Dr. Steinberg, we need to get him checked. Bring the Q-tip. Nick. No, no Q-tips. It's showtime. Drop your panties. No. Hey guys, Nick Drossos. Dr. Andrew Steinberg. And welcome to another episode of... Have the balls to talk about it. So today we're gonna talk about um, a uh, topic near and dear to Nick, which is sexually transmitted diseases. And we got my good friend, Dr. Elroy Shuker to join us today. Hi there. Hello. I saw your balls over there. Yours are quite uh, oh. small compared to mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those are pretty big. <laughs> so yes, hi guys, I'm Dr. Elroy Shuker. I'm a uh, general practitioner um, from Montreal, Quebec, and I'm glad to be here on Have the Balls to Talk About It. So we're going to focus on, because it's a big topic, we're going to focus on, on sexually transmitted diseases or STDs or STIs, sexually transmitted infections, whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, but we're going to focus on men for today um, because women is a whole other subject. And um, let's, uh, let's, start, let's start at the beginning. Yeah. So what, what are the type of sexually transmitted diseases that we see and, and how do they present and how do you treat them? So, so funny thing is actually most patients that come and see me in clinic actually don't have any symptoms and we actually find them as incidental findings on regular STD checkups uh, that should actually be done for any patient that is sexually active, especially if they are not in a uh, monogamous relationship. Um, so yeah, actually most of them are asymptomatic, regardless of whether there are bacterial infections or viral infections or parasitic infections. Actually, we are able to examine the patient uh, if they are symptomatic, so we do a general exam at that point, looking for anything from discharge or uh, tenderness uh, in the uh, testicular region. Uh, we can also look for lymph nodes as well in the area. And then, actually contrary to common belief, we don't necessarily have to insert a, uh, a big Q -tip. swab with a Q-tip uh, down uh, into the penile region and yes. it doesn't Yes, it I doesn't think that, anymore, that's a super right? thing because yeah. now, yeah, that's, you know, we used to... Oh yeah. But now, now it can be done, the same thing could be done with a simple urine test. Yeah, so cool. first thing in the morning, the first urine if possible, um, obviously in order to get any type of growth at that point. Uh, and that's it. So that's just a simple urine test to get most of the STDs that would be common enough to uh, to catch, and those are usually gonorrhea and chlamydia. Okay. Um, and, and is there any kind of like I know nothing about this? Is there yeah. any kind of visual? Somebody who's watching the he show right now. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Shh, I told you, don't talk about it, Andrew. He was not symptomatic. <laughs> yes. is, is there anything like the viewers are watching? At what point, like you know, is there like I mean, if you look at gonorrhea, let's say. What does it mean, and how do I look at it? Can I can I visually see something? At what point do you like run to the doctor? Right. So so as I was saying, actually, you don't usually run to the doctor okay. most of the time unless you had a scare or you had some unprotected sex with um, with a partner that you don't necessarily know, or they're a high risk partner, um, or in another country. Um, and at that point, usually uh, I do see a lot of patients that do come in and and they're scared and and they tell me I need to do all of the tests. Most of the time, actually, if it's immediately after uh, the sexual intercourse, we do not catch anything. And we sometimes have to wait several months, up to even six months, to wow. see uh, positive tests. So a lot of times, unless they're positive early on, we do do um, retesting later on in order to make sure that they weren't uh, affected by the, uh, by the STD or the STI at that point. But as you're saying, actually, for gonorrhea and chlamydia, uh, very, very common. Uh, are actually, those are those the common ones for they're, men? Yes, they're very common. Actually, they're they're. I think the uh, World Health Organization is saying that every day there's a million new patients that are diagnosed with uh, with an STD around the world. So that's that's quite a bit, and there there's hundreds of millions of uh, STDs uh, that are currently going on undiagnosed. And there, there was a dip for a while with, with the big AIDS scare. Yeah, right. And now, and what happened, you know, so there was a dip, people were getting really cautious and, and taking, uh, you know, but now they see people with AIDS, with HIV, yeah. living longer and longer, yeah. people got complacent yeah. and yeah. stopped 
practicing self-sex and it really... And I, I think, back. I don't know if it's just me, but I, I kind of see the younger generation, the 20 year olds are less, they protect themselves less, they're more because we don't talk about it as much, we think we have so much they medicine feel, if something happens. Right, exactly, right. feel invincible. Well, what we care about today a lot of, uh, a lot of times is actually contraception, right? So not impregnating your partner, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if your partner, if it's a female partner and she's on the oral, uh, the oral contraceptive pill or she has an intrauterine device or uh, anything from being vasectomized or anything else, then it doesn't actually protect you from mm -hmm. getting the STD. I think also one of, one, of the, one of the problems is that men, when they have an STD, they have symptoms, they, they burning, discharge, testicular pain or whatever, but there's no, not often long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that women do. Women can, can get bad pelvic disease, uh, which can cause infertility and, and other issues, even, even cancer, cervical cancer. So I think it's selfish of men to, to, to downplay this wow. because of what we can be transmitting to, uh, to the woman uh, in our lives. Not only to the woman at that point, right? If the woman is actually infected uh, at the time of uh, being pregnant or at the time of delivery, which uh, it could actually have very, uh, very dangerous consequences to the fetus or the newborn as well. Um, and we do see that quite a bit actually uh, in hospitals for patients that were uh, unknown, unknowingly infected wow. uh, and they didn't proceed with the appropriate testing during their, uh, during their pregnancy or it was too early to diagnose at that point and at that point they actually have these uh, terrible side effects mm -hmm. or the terrible complications with our newborns. Okay, so we, we just we sort of talked about a little bit the, the urethral ones, the ones that go in the, in the passageway, yeah. chlamydia and gonorrhea. Uh, there's also the, the ones that you see on the outside, the mm -hmm. herpes, syphilis, yeah. and, uh, and so I didn't, even, I, didn't, I, I didn't even yeah. know that. Sorry, guys, because yeah. I'm not a doctor. So I, I didn't know one is more from inside and the one's more from outside. Is that how it works? Well, yeah. So you have the, the gonorrhea and chlamydia, which is really usually on the inside, okay. and it can go back to the prostate and testicles. And then we have oh, the external yeah. ones. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so the external ones are the ones that most people actually see. There is a lot of people okay. that are infected actually without seeing them and, and either uh, intercourse or stress or uh, just plain fatigue can actually make them uh, present themselves and at that point it could be very painful or cause an ulcer, sometimes not even painful and those are even a little bit more dangerous at that point because you start thinking about uh, syphilis which can, you know, if, if left untreated uh, can Syphilis become, is an exterior... Yeah, so usually syphilis is it's a bacterial infection okay. that uh, causes an ulcer usually on the penis okay. uh, that is non-painful. Okay. And a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh, whatever, it's just an ingrown hair, you know, and they have it for a couple of weeks and a couple of months. And uh, next thing you know, it's going into a second stage or a third stage. And, and at that point, it could be quite dangerous. So if you do see anything um, on your penis, I mean, anywhere in that general region, you should definitely consult a doctor. Uh, the internet does not, uh, yeah, yeah, is not enough. It's, yeah. <laughs> definitely not. General warts, also people, uh, you know, because they're slow growing and they start yeah. off small, people ignore them, but they can, in men, turn to, prost turn to penile cancer. Mm -hmm. It's a rare thing, but penile okay. cancer. And when you transmit it to a woman, that, that is the cause of cervical cancer, okay. is, is uh, HPV, wow. uh, the papillomavirus on the cervix causing cervical cancer. Well, they're giving so, boys like, something yeah. now. Is that... Is that is yeah, that that's new? exactly what you're talking okay. about. So yes, there is a vaccine actually. They started with uh, girls actually before yeah. uh, maturing to the sexual age. So usually at nine years old, um, it does not protect you actually against all the HPVs. There's okay. hundreds of different types. Okay. It only protects you against the very common types that, okay. are, that are around. Um, but as Dr. Steinberg was saying, um, HPV in men could cause penile cancer, it could cause throat cancer. Uh, I have a lot of patients that come to me and tell me, look, I have a little skin tag on there. It's been there for the past five years, um, but it's definitely not a skin tag. And at that point, um, you know, obviously their partners are at much higher risk of getting it, uh, which could there be quite dangerous. There was an actor who got well. throat cancer from HPV. Yeah. Um, Michael Douglas. It was Michael Douglas. Yeah. Wasn't Michael, Michael Douglas actually operated on at the Jewish General Hospital? He was Hospital? operated on in Montreal, yeah. yeah. Wow. He, from, from performing oral sex, uh, I assume he got yeah. HPV. No way. Yeah. Condylomas. Uh, Not necessarily from, I mean, it could be heterosexual yeah. uh, intercourse yeah, 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 as well. Yeah, 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 it was. He was married and, uh, yeah. um, and uh, he got throat cancer secondary to that, yeah. 
So um, there's also other, other ones which don't necessarily appear vocally but are transmitted to actually HIV, AIDS yeah. is the... Yeah. Uh, What's the, the difference one? for people who don't know between HIV and AIDS? You know, some right, so, so the big difference is really the stage uh, okay. that it's at. It, AIDS does have certain criteria that uh, you would start seeing quite systemic effects in your, in, in, I mean, general physiology in your, in your body and you'd be able to actually test for it as well okay. uh, in your blood. Well, uh, HIV, you can have the virus without having any symptoms. Correct. Okay. It's, uh, but AIDS it, is, is, a, is quite a, an advanced stage of the advantage. HIV infection. And it's still, is it still common? I remember back in the 80s, we would talk about it, like everybody was afraid. Oh, People you're were... that old, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we, we used to be a lot more safe. I mean, like, I mean, we, you know, we, everybody was, now, like I said, today's generation, we don't talk about it, so we're a little bit more. But we, I think what we were seeing is, we were seeing AIDS, people who had HIV for years, we didn't know what it was, yeah. and people were coming out already at the six stages. Yeah, good point. Uh, way beyond, and then dying, you know, a couple of years later with nothing. And then once we started to be able to test for it, uh, and then, you know, because from, from, at the point you get it, the virus, the HIV, to you actually would die from it is years, and now with the antiviral medications, it's, it's decades. Okay. So that's why we don't see those pictures of these, yeah. uh, you know, uh, skinny, cachectic, withdrawn yeah. men that we were seeing, or men and women, yeah. that we were seeing uh, initially. I mean, it still happens, it still kills, it's still something to, to fear and, and to be be aware of and to, to take care of, but uh, but I think we're with, with much more uh, knowledge. People are getting yeah. tested for it and treated earlier, and so, and it's important to know because uh, it's it's not as easily transmissible as as, yeah. as people uh, would think, um, and uh, you know just because someone has HIV, we don't quarantine them, yeah. quarantine them, and, and stay away from them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's medications that can prevent transmission. There's medications that be can be given afterwards, but of course, prevention is still the best. Uh, For the people watching, how safe, I know this might sound a silly question, how safe is a condom? Like when you think about it, like? That, that's a good question, actually. Okay. It depends on whether or not your partner is actually currently infected. Okay. Um, it depends on whether or not they're currently symptomatic as well. Okay. Um, a lot of those diseases, you can be infected, but you're not shedding, such as uh, herpes uh, simplex. Um, which is actually a, a disease that you'd have, a virus that you'd have for the rest of your life, but it usually comes waxes and weans in your body and okay. whether or not you're infected is going to increase your, uh, your risk. So, so actually for herpes, depending on the location of it and, and other things, you're probably not as infected as people think with condoms. Okay. Same thing goes for uh, HPV condylomas, which we were talking about that could cause the cervical cancer, the penile cancer, the throat cancer. Um, but for HIV, actually, you'd, you'd be quite surprised at how, um, how well protected condoms can be okay. because the risk is low, but it, we are able to even decrease it quite a bit. The problem is with all of these diseases is even if I tell you it's one in a hundred or one in a thousand or one yeah, in a million, yeah. if you're that one, it's a hundred percent. Right, and that's where um, you know if we're able to prevent them, just like so many other diseases, then why not? Yeah, and it's not just for a one night stand. The problem is when 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 someone gets it and they're in a relationship, yeah. we often see the, the the ping pong effect. So the guy gets it and he has a condyloma, and he gets treated for it, removal, burning it, uh, some medications, but his wife hasn't been treated, and then you know he gives she, he's given it to her. Now she gives it back to him, and then she gets treated. Yeah. So really, it, it takes a you know a real approach. You gotta can, you gotta make sure if you're diagnosed that a you're treated properly, b you're safe going onwards, safe sex, uh, mm. condoms, and so on, and c your partner or partners are treated, treated at yeah. the same time. Right. And that's sometimes hard because sometimes they uh, you know it's not your your wife or, or your yeah. girlfriend or yeah. you had an extramarital affair that Remember. you caught it from. Yeah. You have to say yeah you know I got it. You may have it. You know, yeah. not always an easy thing. It's also important to know that, you know, a lot of these STDs are not necessarily from present uh, sexual intercourse. It could True. be something that's, that, that you've had for many years and you never knew about it. Um, and just now you've tested for it and you've tested positive because of those waxing and weaning of, of uh, the virus or the, uh, or the bacterial infection. Another question, yeah. when you talk about STDs, we talk about yeah. like the penis, but like yeah. orally, yeah. Is the same thing can happen to your mouth? Like, Absolutely. You'd have like a ward or something, is the same thing? that So would... you can have gonorrhea in your mouth. 
Okay. Yeah, wow. we were talking about the HPV infection, so we can have herpes, you know, herpes. So definitely. whatever you can get down there, you can get in your mouth by having oral. Practically, yeah. Oral. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, you know, it's also important to, uh, to know that a lot of the diseases that we were talking about today, uh, the gonorrhea, the chlamydia, even syphilis at that point, could be treated with just one dose of antibiotics. Okay. Um, so people are like, oh my God, I'm going to be on, on you know, this, this terrible treatment. No, a lot of times you can actually quite successfully treat them with one dose one of antibiotics. Dose antibiotics and prevents tons of wow. complications potentially Absolutely. down the road. Absolutely. So, so yeah. have the balls to talk about your STD. Yeah. Wear protection. Yeah, and definitely see your doctor if you're, uh, if you're symptomatic or if you're having any, uh, any concern. Any, yeah. any, any concern, concern because yeah. simple tests, simple, okay. simple cures. Uh, can go a long way to prevent. Uh, Absolutely. Yep. So I want to thank Dr. Shuker, thank my colleague, for coming in and, and helping shed light yeah. on this uh, uncomfortable topic yeah. to talk about, talk about, but uh, he had the balls to talk about it, so you guys should also. Yeah. So guys, thanks for watching another episode of Have the Balls to Talk About It. Hey, those are mine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thanks, Doc. So Andrew, where can they find you? SteinbergUrology.com or Instagram SteinbergUrology. Guys, visit my website, NickJoseph.com. And I'm on Dr. Shuker, uh, so Dr. Underscore Shuker on Instagram. You can find me there. Also, uh, at have the balls to talk about it. New Instagram as well. Don't forget, leave a comment in the box. If you have any questions, future shows you'd like us to cover, put in the comment box. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.